I welcome all of you. Uh, we are privileged to have Dr. Harshavardhan Reddy with us. Dr. Harshavardhan has done uh, fellowship in vitreo clinical surgery from Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai. And he will be talking, he is a consultant uh, with us in vitreo retina. And he will be talking on how to manage nucleus drop. Dr. Harshavardhan, please start. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, nucleus drop, and um, uh, I'm going to try and include everything from uh, cortex to nucleus to IOL and everything else you can find and drop into the vitreous cavity during a cataract surgery. So if there's one thing that I would want you to take away from today, it would be um, if you have a PCR with uh, and you notice a nucleus sinking, uh, I think the reflex usually is to somehow immediately pull that out, but uh, that can be very detrimental to your patient. So uh, you should avoid that. Um, so the nucleus is dropping, what do you do? You just let it drop. So retained lens material following a PCR can be anything from small cortical fragments to uh, uh, entire nucleus. The reported incidence for this is 0.3 to 1.1 percent. Now, uh, what is this like? Why do you? Why do we need to be uh, wary of this, and why do we need to fix this? So the lens capsule actually has an immunologic function, so it acts as a barrier. So once that is breached, it can cause phacoanaphylaxis. So this can present with recurrent non-specific inflammation, vitritis with cystoid macular edema recurrent uveitis with posterior sinicae. So now there are certain risk factors which we all know, but we should keep in mind and look for these in uh, all of our pre-op patients. Now, why do we need to do this? Is uh, This will help us in uh, not just <clears throat> planning ahead, but also prepare ourselves, prepare the patient and keep a retina surgeon on standby. So for example, uh, if we talk about posterior polar cataract, we all know that posterior cholar cataract, there's a good chance that there might be a PCR or there might be a nucleus drop following that. So imagine if uh, you diagnose this patient preoperatively and you have explained to the patient that this is not a simple cataract and there is a the theoretical risk of a complication happening, but you are aware of that and you are uh, equipped to deal with that. It, this is much easier than to explain to the patient after it has already happened. Then um, even in a post vitrectomized eyes, now this could be for many reasons, there could have been a lens touch during uh, the primary vitrectomy or trauma to the zonules. Then some other non-specific risk factors like very advanced age, deep socket, uh, hard nucleus, uh, undilated pupil or post trauma. And one of the other uh, risk factors that uh, I guess no one talks about is an inexperienced surgeon. So there is a study which has uh, reported the risk of uh, PCR with uh, nucleus drop to be up to 14% uh, in trainee surgeons. So this is actually a complication that at some point or the other, irrespective of your skill level, I think everyone has to go through this. So the thing about PCR is uh, sometimes you'll be operating and suddenly you'll feel like something's not right and you get that doubt, you know, that uh, maybe there's a PCR. And when you do get that doubt, it usually is there. So uh, the thing about, like like I just said, that uh, these are complications that I, it's almost inevitable. Everyone at some point has to face it. And uh, the, the key is to know what to do and how to manage these complications. And uh, the two most important things about managing a complication, one is to uh, recognize it. And uh, second is to uh, uh, recognize it and also um, do everything you can to give the best possible outcome from here on. And the second is to uh, uh, prevent any further complications. So now uh, there are some signs which will help you recognize whether there's a PCR or there's a vitreous disturbance. Uh, these are, uh, the AC suddenly starts deepening, 
there is difficulty in holding the nucleus fragments with your uh, phaco probe and it it uh, feels as if away from your phaco probe and uh, there may be momentary pupillary dilatation you uh, uh, please keep an eye on the iris here so hydro dissection is being done and then you will see that suddenly the uh, the, the pupil starts dilating so that is one of the early signs so now the let's say the pcr has happened or the nucleus drop has happened then uh, let's talk about what do we do from here on so we'll discuss some of the do's and don'ts in uh, such a case the first thing is to not panic uh, take a deep breath sing a song whatever works the second is to avoid any uh, unnecessary manipulation so uh, like like we spoke about this so the immediate reflex usually is to somehow just pull the nucleus out you know prevent it from falling into the vitreous cavity but actually that is very detrimental to your patient uh, because this can cause vitreous traction and this increases the risk for uh, retinal detachment and you wouldn't want that uh, the thing you need to understand about vitreous is that uh, it's like a slingy toy so the more you tug at it the more it will come to you and the more it will tug onto the retina and bring it with you with it so you should avoid that and uh, do not try any heroic stunts leave it to the people who are professionally trained for it now <clears throat> when it does happen so what exactly should you do so uh, i think the first thing is to like i said not panic and then uh, inject viscoelastic so usually in most cases the nucleus is well supported by the vitreous uh, unless it is disturbed so when you inject the viscoelastic what it will do it will it will coat and tampon out the vitreous and also support the nucleus now this will allow you to withdraw the phaco probe safely without the vitreous surging forward so and some of the other things you should keep in mind are uh, low bottle height low vacuum and high cut rate when you are uh, dealing with the vitreous and uh, second thing is when you have a doubt or when there is a pcr or uh, you see vitreous never use the phaco probe from there on so the the thing about the phaco probe is it will never cut the vitreous it will only aspirate it and you don't want that because that is what is going to cause your uh, traction and uh, you know it may cause a retinal tear so um, your primary goal and your responsibility should be uh, a good anterior vitrectomy first your anterior chamber should be completely uh, devoid of any vitreous you can use uh, intracameral triamcinolone for good visualization it is absolutely safe and uh, once you've done that once you're sure that your anterior chamber is completely clear of any vitreous the um, uh, you can uh, take the decision about implanting whether you want to implant the uh, lens or not we'll discuss that a little more in detail later uh, and uh, after that the other most important thing is a proper wound closure <clears throat> i think it should be uh, I, when you have a pcr with even minimal vitreous disturbance you should make it a thing to put uh, to suture the wound it's not going to do any harm so uh, these there are many some people have noticed some anti segment surgeons are reluctant in using intracameral uh, triamcinolone but there are many studies uh, proving the safety and uh, efficacy of uh, triamcinolone uh, for uh, anterior vitrectomy <clears throat> now coming to how do you decide whether you should put a uh, intraocular lens in such a case or not so once you've performed a good anterior vitrectomy and you're sure there is no uh, vitreous in the anterior chamber you should assess the uh, the capsular support um, so um, suppose there's a central uh, circular pcr like in a case of uh, posterior polar cataract you can very easily put a lens in the a uh, bag without any problem but suppose there is a bigger pcr then you assess the sulcus support look at the alc margin and if you're sure it's uh, there's a good sulcus support you can put in a three piece uh, iol in the sulcus and it's uh, absolutely safe after after this like we spoke about uh, wound closure so like i said like one extra suture is way better than having one more complication so once you have done this uh, always refer the patient to a retina consultant i feel like uh, any pcr with even mild vitreous disturbance should be seen by a retina surgeon because you never know you know sometimes while manipulating the vitreous 
there might be some mild traction there might be a small break somewhere in the periphery so it's always better to refer the patient this is not obviously we all know it's not an emergency but it's definitely uh, important nonetheless um so now uh, suppose in cases where you're not sure sometimes there are times when you're not you're not able to assess the capsular status and you're not sure then please do not insert the iol it's definitely better to to have a good aphakia than to have uh, you know like uh, to uh, try manipulate too much and cause more problems there are times when people uh, in the desperation to put a lens they will put in ctrs they'll try everything suture the lens do not do that like there's no problem the lens can always be implanted in a second sitting because ctr if the ctr drops then it's a it's it's a pain to remove that so one thing we all know but we should keep it in mind even in such cases is that ctr basically is for cases with zonular dialysis they doesn't have any role in uh, pcr so just to sort of recap uh, recap whatever we were discussed so far uh, right from your pre op evaluation you uh, identify risk factors counsel the patient plan ahead then once the pcr or the nucleus drop has happened you assess the uh, uh, the uh, problem and uh, do a thorough anterior vitrectomy then assess your uh, a uh, capsular status decide whether you want to put the lens or not do a good wound closure and once you've done that then refer the patient to a retina surgeon now let's look at it from the other uh, perspective like suppose you're a retina surgeon and you have a, a patient with a nucleus drop referred to you how do you go about it the one thing uh, you should remember is so for a retina surgeon this is actually a simple case compared to a complicated retinal detachment or a diabetic vitrectomy but nevertheless these are potential 66 cases so the margin for error is very very low and uh, like my mentor always said that uh, these are the cases that are going to bring you your bread and butter so if you fix these cases good uh, give good vision to the patient that's how your anterior segment colleagues are going to develop uh, confidence in you and send you patients you know so you have to be extra careful in these cases so now uh, uh, what are the indications for uh, intervention like when do you decide how do you decide whether or not you want to um, intervene and do a lensectomy or not so there are two schools of thoughts here one says that um, the lens fragments that have dropped have to be more than 25% or 2 mm in diameter or there should be a presence of inflammation there should be a secondary rise in iop or associated um, rd retinal tears or endophthalmitis the second school of thought says any dislocated nuclear fragments should be removed this is what i follow that uh, the small chunks of cortex may not need any intervention but uh, uh, the, any nuclear fragment irrespective of the size is better to uh, remove it now once you've decided that it the case needs intervention uh, uh, the, uh, the the next uh, step is when do you do it so the timing of surgery actually uh, there are enough studies which have shown that there's no correlation between timing of vitrectomy and outcome i think it's uh, uh, to the individual surgeon um, uh, surgeon's decision so uh, i feel like if you've decided that the uh, if you're sure that the case needs intervention early intervention is always better you don't want to wait for a complication to happen but provided again like there are other things that you need to assess like if there's corneal edema it's better to wait wait for the edema to subside have a uh, because good visualization is obviously always important for a uh, safe surgery so that's i think the decision is for the surgeon uh, to make and uh, there is a, like we always already discussed it's it's uh, not an emergency there is no need to absolutely do it on the same day like in like i said like if the cornea is it matters and the view is not good it's always better to wait for uh, that to clear out and then only go ahead so now what are the different situations that you might see in uh, 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 in such cases so uh, sometimes there might just be a little cortex the small cortical chunks don't need intervention they will not even cause any problems then uh, the nucleus so it is important 
to assess uh, if the nucleus is important to assess the grade of cataract whether it was a soft cataract or a hard uh, nucleus or the size of the nucleus because uh, why is this important is because this will help you plan your surgery ahead then uh, there are the, if there's an iol drop or you it's um, important to see whether it is a three piece or a single piece we we'll, i'll talk about it why that is important then uh, like we said there can be a ctr there can be associated retinal breaks rd cd or a combination of uh, all of these also actually so the first step uh, always is a good uh, pre op evaluation always do the io thoroughly yourself uh, do not trust your anterior segment colleagues uh, because a lot of times they'll go like a chota sa piece has gone down but uh, uh, once you go inside you find out that it's almost the entire nucleus so don't trust anyone always uh, uh do a thorough pre op evaluation yourself and uh, so yeah, i was i was talking about the grade of cataract and why that is important so uh, it will help you uh, decide whether you can take care of it only with the vitrectomy cutter or you will need a phragmatome so uh, just cortex epinucleus or uh, soft cataract your regular vitrectomy cutter actually is enough but uh, in case there's a hard nucleus you will need a phragmatome so now why do you need to assess this beforehand is because uh, if you if you have to use a phragmatome your wound construction becomes different i'll i'll show you that in a bit in a video but uh, yeah so you need to know beforehand because your wound construction becomes different than a normal uh, uh, sclerotomy and uh, in case of a very hard nucleus i mean there are uh, uh, there, there's theory saying you know like you can use pfcl to levitate the nucleus uh, bring it into the anterior chamber and deliver it to the cataract section i would not suggest it i think if you have a good uh, phragmatome it takes care of all grades of cataracts like brown black doesn't matter and i feel like it's like safer and more neater to do it in the posterior chamber there are different uh, phragmatomes that are available uh, i use the constellation uh, one which is a 20 gauge phragmatome um, so now these these are the foot pedal settings this is very important to know actually the first part is uh, only where the suction is applied and the second one is where the power comes in and third is where you get maximum power i'll tell you why this is important so uh, the thing about phragmatome it actually makes your surgery very easy but uh, you have to keep in mind certain pointers if you don't then it can absolutely destroy your surgery so uh, the first and the foremost thing before you enter a, a, a vitreous cavity with your phragmatome is to ensure complete vitreous removal so this is also a point of discussion in case of a, a, a vitrectomy with lensectomy is uh, whether you need to actually do a complete vitreous removal do you need to induce pvd but uh, that discussion i don't think applies when you're using a phragmatome it's not um, uh, it's uh, uh, not negotiable i feel like you have to before entering the phragmatome the vitreous cavity has to be completely devoid of vitreous so your phragmatome is nothing it's it's, it's like a phaco probe without the infusion sleeve you know so like we already discussed it can't cut the vitreous but it is going to aspirate it so it it can be very detrimental to your uh, patient so uh, how do you use it so basically we are talking about the foot pedal controls right so uh, once you've done a complete vitrectomy now your nucleus is uh, resting uh, it doesn't have a vitreous scaffold so it is resting on the retina so uh, uh, you should you should never use the uh, frag power when your probe is close to the retina ever so what you do is you go close to the nucleus apply only suction engage the nucleus completely bring it into the mid vitreous cavity and then and only then use the uh, power and uh, like i said once you've engaged the nucleus the your uh, the port of your frag should be completely occluded with the nucleus and only then uh, you should use uh, power so um, and also you can use the light pipe as a second instrument to help break the nucleus for counter pressure or even to help feed the nucleus into the frag and um, so the, the, the other thing like i said you have to be very careful because the breaks that happen because of your frag they are usually never those small 
poles or red notomies you know these are going to be like large breaks like even grts actually so you have to be very careful so this is a video so you see the complete vitrectomy is being done first before anything and uh, you'll see how a frag like i said like it makes your surgery very easy uh, because like it barely so here you see the cannula has been removed so that was actually a 23 gauge uh, uh, vitrectomy system so cannula was removed and the incision was extended with a mvr to accommodate the 20 gauge uh, fragmentome and you see how quickly the nucleus just is eaten away with the frag now the role of actually in that video pfcl is not used but ideally you should use pfcl so the why do we need to use pfcl so what basically the main function is for it to protect your uh, retina so uh, what pfcl does is once you inject the pfcl it will uh, float the uh, nucleus or the iol um, onto the onto its surface so uh, there is a reduced risk of uh, damage to the retina while you are manipulating it the other thing is that basically like i said it protects uh, uh, it forms a protective layer over the posterior pole and reduces risk of damage from the uh, power uh, power of the frag and uh, Uh, it also protects the uh, macula from contusion injuries so every time the lens uh, falls posteriorly it is going to fall on the retina right so it pro uh, prevents uh, the nucleus from doing that and uh, yes like if, in case you have used the pfc or always remember not to leave it behind and remove it completely now coming to uh, a dropped iol like um, i said uh, once you know that the iol is dropped always try to uh, assess whether it is a three piece or a single piece now why is that is because uh, if suppose it's a single piece iol you cannot uh, squarely fix it ideally so you will have to explant it and uh, then do an sfil but in case it's a three piece you can actually use the same uh, lens uh, to uh, do an sfil so again that's important for you to plan your incision and everything we'll come to that so the uh, like i was saying just uh, so this is a three piece this is a video showing a three piece iol that is dropped into the vitreous cavity your first uh, we're injecting a pfcl and then we'll pull the lens over the surface of the pfcl so it's nicely resting on the pfcl so it makes it very easily you don't have to worry about uh, pinching the retina when you are uh, ho holding the haptic with your uh, forceps so here comes over the edge of the uh, haptic and it is brought out from the sclerotomy now there can be a uh, ctr also can drop uh, one thing you should always remember is the ctr is like a semi circle so you have to sort of visualize it you cannot remove it completely because if you try to pull it out the trailing limb of the ctr is going to tear your retina so the only way to i think safe way to do it is uh, by cutting in, it into two halves there is a ctr that is dropped you cut it in the center there it is in two halves and now you can very easily remove it without any problem from your uh, sclerotomy itself there but the same thing if you try to pull out the entire ctr then the trailing uh, uh, limb is going to uh, tear the uh, retina for sure so now um, i was telling you about this so the, uh, this is a point of discussion i think we can discuss at the end of the uh, class that uh, whether we should induce pvd or not so this is a study where they found that uh, preserving the posterior hyoid actually prevented uh, intraoperative break formation um and uh, the post op uh, uh, the incidence of post op retinal detachment it was not influenced by uh, uh, whether the complete vitreous removal was done or not 
now coming to uh, a, a, a technique for SFI. So once you've taken care of the drop nucleus or the lens or CTR and all of that, next thing is to uh, is the lens implantation. So uh, there are many techniques actually for SFIL. I am going to discuss the one that I use. This is a no flap, no glue uh, 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 SFIL. This was in, uh, introduced by uh, Gabber. So we'll just go through the uh, surgical technique and I'll uh, tell you about a, a little modification that is uh, uh, that I do now. Um, so basically you have to do a 180 degree conjunctival peritomy followed by your cautery. You make uh, you have to make two scleral pockets for uh, which have to be 180 degree apart and 1.5 mm from the limbus and uh, they have to be tangential to your uh, uh, limbus and um, yeah this is basically and uh, there are two sclerotomies uh, right next to your uh, scleral pockets for exteriorizing the haptics then your normal regular whatever 23 or 25 gauge uh, vitrectomy ports and uh, yeah, then you make the main incision um, in this, uh, we are talking about a corneoscleral incision because uh, 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 it's uh, this is a uh, technique describing a rigid IOL. Then once that is done, you insert the IOL, the leading haptic is grasped, end of the haptic is grasped with the end gripping uh, forceps and exteriorized to the sclerotomy and then tucked into the scleral pocket. Same thing is done for the trailing haptic. And then once you've done that, IOL is centered and positioned properly and uh, uh, your uh, conjunctiva and your sutures, uh, your incisions are closed after that. So how do we construct the sterile pockets? Like I said, it has to be 1.5 mm from the limbus, tangential to the limbus. It is basically a partial thickness uh, uh, scleral pocket. Then the sclerotomy, like these have to be again 180 degree apart. It has to be a straight uh, a, a, a scleral incision. I use uh, a 25 gauge vitrectomy system. So I use a 24 gauge needle to make this sclerotomy. So this is basically to, this is, this will be right next to your scleral pocket. And this is basically to exteriorize your uh, haptics. And once you've done that, you just tuck it into uh, the scleral pocket. I have a better video. I'll show you that you understand better. So here, this is a rigid lens. That's why the large peritomy. So there, the end of the haptic is grasped with an end gripping forcep and it is exteriorized through the sclerotomy. And the trailing haptic is then pushed into the vitreous cavity. So now the haptic is grabbed and tucked into the scleral pocket, which is right next to the sclerotomy opening. Now, what do you do with the trailing haptic? Like I said, we pushed it into the vitreous cavity. There you've grasped it. And same thing, you bring it out uh, from the sclerotomy and tuck it into the scleral pocket, which is right next to, which is right next to the uh, sclerotomy opening. Now, sometimes there can be, like we discussed earlier, people will try putting in a CTR also. So sometimes there can be an entire CTR IOL back complex. So what do you do in those cases? First is you have to uh, clear uh, everything of the attachment, the IOL and the CTR of uh, all attachments, like PFCL to protect your uh, retina. So once you've uh, used your cutter to clear all the attachments, then you can remove those two separately. Like we said, CTR, you can you have to cut it in two halves before removing. And again, this is another video of a rigid three-piece lens used for SFIL. The trailing haptic is now being exteriorized. And then tucked. 
so now i have actually stopped using the rigid uh, rigid eye well i use the uh, three piece uh, foldable lens to do this so there the advantage is that you need only a small uh, conjun uh, conjunctival peritomy you only need a nasal and temporal about 2 to 3 clock hours for your scleral pocket and your sclerotomy um, uh, uh, as compared to a 180 degree peritomy in a rigid lens and your uh, incision is just like a phaco wound so this is actually post op uh, uh, image of uh, uh, SFI that I did using a foldable lens. So, like if you look at it like that, it looks not very different from a phaco surgery. So the recovery is much faster, and patient has good vision. So it's actually very difficult to even tell that it's an SFI and not a, a regular phaco. If there are any questions. Thanks, Dr. Harz. It was an excellent presentation. Actually, up to a second haptic, jo, you might, malab, you can use double hand technique. Like, a hand, you can hold the uh, second haptic and other use the other hand to pull that out without pushing and pushing into the picture. Any queries or comments? Uh, good morning, sir. I don't really but you. So my question is how is a fragmatome different from a FACO Pro? Dr. Harsh? Hello. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get. So how is the frag a fragmatome different from a FACO Pro? So FACO Pro, first of all, uh, uh, you uh, the fragmatome it uses a power of eighty to uh, one hundred. 8200 and a vacuum of uh, around uh, 80 to 150 50 to 100 sorry power of 50 to 100 and uh, 80 to 150 vacuum okay sir and second thing is uh, this is a 20 gauge and uh, third is uh, that your uh, with your phaco probe you won't be able to reach the uh, vitreous cavity there are actually there are other techniques described where you can remove the phaco sleeve and still reach the vitreous cavity. Yes, sir. But the frag is designed for uh, you to reach, be able to reach there. Okay, thank you, sir. Basically, yes, both sir. are almost same, and uh, you can, but length is I think somewhat longer in pragmato. Yes. And uh, like you can use the you know, the Peko probe also if Tagmatum is not available, just say Dr. Harsin, I uh, uh, Good morning, sir. I have one question, sir. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, in the uh, last case, you have uh, shown that if uh, I didn't understand properly, that if there is a situation, we have a uh, this CTR back complex inside right. the vitreous cavity. Correct. So, do we need to uh, separate the CTR from the uh, this uh, uh, lens or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you have to first cut all the attachments. So, then it automatically gets separated. And once you do that, then you cut the CTR in two halves and remove it in two halves. And then you remove or fix the same IOL depending on what IOL it is. Okay. Now, we need to, one means we need to separate the CTR from the lens. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you won't be able to remove it, no? And sir, one more situation, if a uh, uh, whole of the back complex, so like uh, uh, surgeon just started the doing the, uh, and like, if, uh, or you can, we can see that if, uh, in case of trauma, if whole uh, of the back, back complex is inside the vitreous cavity, will our management be some different or uh, just we need to go inside and uh, remove the vitreous and then uh, do the fragment? The fragment same, only, same only, it doesn't change your management uh, at all. You have to treat it like uh, entire. Uh, nucleus has dropped you to treat it uh, like that only. Like it, it doesn't change your management at all. Okay. Or you CT, CTR, and CTR, you, you can also, uh, like without cutting it into two, you can remove it. So, this is what you have to do. You have to do the car. If it is hmm. like, uh, suppose it is like uh, lying to your left side, the concave side is to your right side. So, you can remove it from the port and remove it from the right side. So, you can just 
रोटेट कर सकते हो उसको जस्ट खींच सकते हो एंड इट कम्स आउट विदाउट कटिंग इट इज ऑल्सो पॉसिबल कि आप पूरा निकाल सकते हो लेकिन डेफिनेटली यू नीड टू बी श्योर दैट विटामिन इज कॉम्प्लीट स्पेसिफिकली पेरिफेरल विच यस 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 मतलब इसको खींचना नहीं है आप जस्ट रोटेट टाइप मतलब आई बॉल के जो कॉन्टूर है उसके हिसाब से यू जस्ट रोटेट जैसे आप डालते हो रोटेट कर करके ऐसे निकालते बन के यू कैन रोटेट इट एंड इट कैन कम लाइक इट एज ए होल सिटी actually i have seen one case sir in a fellowship where ctr was being removed and it caused a, the trailing limb caused a large grt <laughs> so it's very scary ha ho sakta hai it is a definitely possibility to uske liye bhi ye sabse ek ye karna hai acha se to uske baad ek and sir one thing that uh, while using the pfcl uh, i have seen that sometimes the if you try to float the iul or even the uh, this nucleus Yes, the 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 haptic, the haptic can break, can 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 break, the retina and it can cause break. Yes. Or haan, goes ye, peri- it it goes to the periphery. it 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 goes to periphery. don't remain in the center it, because it has the, uh, convex surface. So sometimes it go towards the retina and uh, I have seen once that it got stuck uh, near the vitreous base. Uh, no, और, so, और एक चीज है इसमें जो आपका जो इन्फ्यूजन है ना दैट इज वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट बेसिकली पी एफ सी जब डाल रहे हो इधर इन्फ्यूजन बहुत ही कम या इन्फ्यूजन स्टॉप करके रखना है इसमें जब भी आप पी एफ सी एल डाल रहे हो डाल रहे हो अगर इन्फ्यूजन चालू करके रखा है और इन्फ्यूजन ज्यादा है ना तो द टर्बुलेंस इट कॉजेस बिकॉज इट इज ऑलरेडी इन्फ्यूजन कम्प्लीटली एंड आई रोटेट द ग्लोब uh to the opposite side of the lens and then inject the pfcl so that automatically twists the lens and brings it on top ha aur ek cheez hai ye jab bhi aap interventron kar rahe ho better do not switch on the infusion theek hai aap pfcl dalne ke baad wo waise hi thoda form reh jata hai to aap andar ja ke uske baad ek haptic ko hold karke uske baad infusion chalu karke aap nikal sakte ho matlab basically if you are keeping the infusion on hai aur if the pressure is high then there is like or specifically ye jo multi piece three piece lenses hain they are right. very difficult. they will cause breaks theek hai ye mere sath bhi hua hua hai but aapko main jo hai the turbulence has to be minimized in the vitreous cavity the fluid should be agar fluid chalu bhi hai it should be very so aur ek cheez hai agar fluid tap de kar do to bahut se aur pf seal chote 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 ho jayenge to wo agar pf seal chote chote ho jayenge to wo ab bahut sare log lens matlab rarely ho sakta lens pf seal ke piche matlab pf seal upar लेंस अंदर और नीचे रेटिना वो भी हो सकता है ठीक है yes. तो बेसिकली इन्फ्यूज और पीएफसीएल इज अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट थिंग टू रिमूव इफ इट इज वेरी वेरी स्मॉल एंड इफ द कॉर्निया बिकम्स एनी मटर्स तो बहुत मतलब यू कैन यूज इट वेरी जुडिशियली एंड जो बोल रहे हैं ना मतलब बी वेरी सेफ तो मेनली इन्फ्यूजन को आपको देखना है इन्फ्यूजन आप बिटेक्टोमाइज टाइम में इन्फ्यूजन ज्यादा करके चलाना नहीं है तो फंस जाओगे मैं एक ये कह रहा था कि अगर पीएफसीएल को ऊपर से तो वो कन्वेक्स शेप ले लेता है तो मतलब जब भी मतलब वो ऊपर आईयूएल या फिर कुछ भी मतलब या न्यूक्लियस है वो पूरा पेरिफेरी में चले जाता है स्लाइड होके हां तो वो तो आपने पीएफसीएल पूरा डाल दिया क्या सिर्फ पोस्टीरियर पोल प्रोटेक्ट करना है यू डोंट हैव टू पुट मच पीएफ अगर हम फ्लोट करने की सोच रहे हैं अगर हम एसी में लाने की सोच रहे हैं नहीं तो होल्ड कर लो ना यूजुअली एक इसके लिए मतलब देखो आरडी में अगर आप पेरिफेरल ब्रेक से निकालना चाहते हो या जीआरटी है देन इट इज ओके टू पुट पीएफसीएल एंड डू लाइक दिस ये जो आप बोल रहे हो जस्ट पीएफसीएल डाल डाल के लेंथ को ऊपर लाओगे तो दिस इज अ डिफिकल्ट प्रोपोजिशन उसमें आपका जो ब्रेक ऐसे ही होगा ठीक है बेटर है कि पोस्टर पोल में जस्ट पोस्टर पोल आर्किड तक पी डाल के उसको फ्लोट करो एंड देन होल्ड इट विथ समथिंग एंड देन ब्रिंग इट विथ योर इंस्ट्रूमेंट इट सेल्फ डू नॉट यूज पी एफ सी एल एज ए मतलब एज ए थिंग टू मतलब पुश द थिंग अप और एक चीज है इसमें और एक इशू है कि आपका अगर विट्रोमी बहुत सारे मतलब ऐसे केसेस में क्या होता है ट्यूबली छोटा रहता है क्योंकि सर्जिकल पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव है और सर्जिकल ट्रोमा है मेनी टाइम्स इट द ट्यूबली स्मॉल और इट बिकम्स स्मॉल व्हेन यू ऑपरेट ठीक है तो इसमें क्या होता है बहुत सारे पेरिफेरल विट्रियस रह जाता है आप जितना ही बोलो पेरिफेरी में विट्रियस विट्रियस बचा हुआ है आपका मतलब इक्वेटर के बाहर और आप अगर पीएफसीएल डाल के इक्वेटर तक डाल दिए तो वो विट्रियस में पीएफसीएल ट्रैक्शन करेगा और डेफिनेटली वो जो लेंस है लेंस फंस जाएगा तो yes. ये मुझे नहीं लगता अच्छा आइडिया है आप जस्ट पोस्टर पोल को प्रोटेक्ट करो जहां पे यू आर श्योर दैट विट्रोमी इज देयर पीवीटी है 
और पीवी हो गया वहां पे फीचर्स नहीं है और उसको होल्ड करके आप सामने ले जाओ यस और एक थैंक चीज है ये जो थ्री पीस आई है ना अगर आपको थ्री पीस आई ओल या थ्री पीस आई ओल बैक कॉम्प्लेक्स है उसको ये में भी मतलब सुचार कर सकते हैं अगर आईरिस ट्रोमाटाइज नहीं है तो आईरिस में भी सुचार कर सकते हो ठीक है एस एफ आई कर सकते हो लेकिन अगर आईरिस मतलब आई ओल बैक कॉम्प्लेक्स है आप उसको कुछ ट्रोमाटाइज ना करके आई ओल बैक कॉम्प्लेक्स रख के जस्ट जो हैप्टिक है उसको आप आईरिस के साथ सुचार, सुचार कर सकते हो एज ए होल आईरिस बैक कॉम्प्लेक्स के हाँ सर मैंने सर ने एक बार किया था मतलब इसको ऐसा फाइल की तरह पूरा इंटरनल फिक्सेशन ही कर दिया था पूरे हाँ का पूरा तो बेसिकली जो लेंस है उसको अगर आप एक कर दे तो मतलब खुद से इतना फिक्सेट कर दो तो बाहर वाला ऊंट बनाना नहीं पड़ता है एंड आई बी का आई रिमेन्स वेरी स्टेबल एक बार आपने ऊंट बना दिया तो बड़ा ऊंट बना दिया तो मतलब विजुअलाइजिंग द पोस्टर सेगमेंट बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज द इफ यू हैव यू आर यू आर हैविंग कॉन्टेक्ट सिस्टम लाइक कॉन्टेक्ट लेंस है आपके आँख के ऊपर तो वो ये के लिए आपका असिस्टेंट के लिए होल्ड करना डिफिकल्ट होता है एंड आई बिकम्स मतलब आई का जो इंटीग्रिटी है वो तो अनस्टेबल हो गया ना बड़ा ऊंट है उसके लिए उसमें बैक कॉम्प्लेक्स गिर गया उसमें प्यूपिल भी यूजुअली छोटा होगा ठीक है नहीं वही ये ये मतलब ये ऐसा सिनेरियो है जो मतलब मैंने ज्यादा देखा नहीं है सिर्फ एक ही बार आया और उसी में ही सर ने मतलब उसको इंटरनल फिक्सेशन किया हाँ तो मुझे लगता है कि अगर फ्यूचर में मेरे पास आएगा तो इसलिए मैं सोच रहा हूँ की मतलब की इसको कैसे मैनेज किया जाए ये बहुत बहुत रेयर है इसमें जो सर ने किया ना अगर मेरे पास आता है अगर पीपिल पीपिल छोटा है तो मेरे पास मैं पूरा जो आई बैक कॉम्प्लेक्स अगर पूरा इंटैक्ट है आई मे कीप इट इंटैक्ट जस्ट उसको सामने लाके उसको सेंटर में होल्ड करके उसका दोनों साइड में जो ए है हैप्टिक है उसको आप इस आई से सुचार कर सकते हैं तो इट बिकम्स लाइक ऑब्वियसली सीखना पड़ेगा अभी भाजिंदर बताओ आई से कैसे सुचार करेंगे क्या क्या मेथड है उसका आयरिस से तो आयरिस से अगर पोस्टरियर कुछ चीज सुचार करना है या आयरिस को किसी चीज से सुचार करना है तो व्हाट आर द मेथड दिस मेथड चीज टाइप नहीं हमने आयरिस से सुचार नहीं किया था हमने एसएफ फाइल की तरह सुचार किया था इंटरनल फिक्सेशन अच्छा एसएफ फाइल की तरह तो सीटीआर का क्या किया था उसमें मतलब हमने जैसे एक बार मतलब जैसे मतलब एक पॉकेट बनाया और एक साइड से ये स्ट्रेट नीडल पास किया और ए वन एटी डिग्री मतलब कॉर्निया के उधर एंट्री बना के उधर से निकाल के फिर उसको रिवर्स करके दोबारा से फिर वहां से निकला था नहीं मतलब मत, मत, नहीं क्या क्या मुझे समझ में नहीं आया मतलब डिड यू ये ब्रिंग आउट द आई ओल बैक कॉम्प्लेक्स और दोबारा इंसर्ट किया नहीं नहीं इस, सर ने मतलब एसी में लाके उसको वहां पे आ, मतलब क्या कैसे समझा सर मतलब जैसे आ, मतलब एक साइड से पहले स्ट्रेट नीडल पास किया और आई एल बैक कॉम्प्लेक्स के बीच में से मतलब जो यहाँ पे आई वो सॉरी सी और उसका जंक्शन था उसके बीच में से पास किया एक बार स्ट्रेट नीडल और किसका सी और किसका सी और आई का जो वो था हैप्टिक और ऑप्टिक हाँ सी और आई एल हैप्टिक और आई ऑप्टिक कौन सा हैप्टिक हैप्टिक सी और आई हैप्टिक के बीच में हाँ मतलब दोनों को दो, वो तो कौर, पूरा कॉम्प्लेक्स ही था ना सर बे, बेसि, बेसिकली दो हाँ कॉम्प्लेक्स को क्या किया तो उस मतलब उन दोनों मतलब पूरा जो बैग था उसको सर ने सेपरेट नहीं किया कि मतलब एक साइड से स्ट्रेट नीडल लेके दोनों के मतलब जहाँ पे सी और हेप्टिक दोनों एक साथ मतलब थे और उनके और जो ऑप्टिक के बीच का जो एरिया था वहां से पियर्स किया उसको हाँ स्ट्रेट नीडल को हाँ फिर दूसरी साइड से मतलब कॉर्निया से एंट्री बना के उधर से निकाला और फिर उसको घुमा के वापस ले जाके और मतलब उसी जहां से हमने एंट्री बनाई थी उसी के पास से ही निकाल के दोबारा मतलब निकाल के उधर फिक्स मतलब किया। बेसिकली सूचा टाइप का कर दिया वही बोल रहे हो ना हाँ, किया था नहीं नहीं सूचा टाइप कर दिया मतलब ये भी एक अच्छा आइडिया है की जैसे हम पहले करते थे 
मतलब वो रिजी राइवल को जैसे फ्यूचर फिक्सेशन कर सकते हैं ऐसे कर सकते हैं बोथ सीटीआर एंड द हैप्टी उसको आप ऐसे करके सिलाई कर सकते हो दोनों साइड तो थोड़ा टील्ट हो सकता है बट इट इज आल्सो अ वेरी गुड टेक्निक क्योंकि ऐसे केसेस में मतलब इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट ठीक है आप अगर आज एक ऑप्शन तो है आप पूरा चीज को निकाल लो बड़ा ऊन करके ऐसा ही चीज ऊन करके पूरा निकाल के उसके बाद एक स्क्वायर डाल दो अगर इसको रखना है इसको ये वाला कर सकते हो ये वाला अच्छा ये है कि आप जस्ट मतलब हैप्टी और निकालने के लिए फिर हमें काफी बड़ी एंट्री करनी पड़नी थी इसलिए सर ने पहले फिर वो मतलब नहीं 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 ये ये अच्छा है लेकिन ये जितना इजी सुनने में लगता है उतना इजी है नहीं नहीं इजी है नहीं मतलब हाँ ये इतना इजी है नहीं बट ये अच्छा चीज है मतलब कर सकते हैं मतलब सर ने वैसे ही किया जैसे ऑलमोस्ट आईरिस की रिपेयर के लिए हम एक बार नीडल उधर पास करके फिर वापस ले आते हैं फिर उसको बांध दिया हाँ मैं मैं जस्ट बोलूंगा कि आईरिस रिपेयर का जो जो मेथड है ना क्या क्या स्विचर है स्विचर क्या है सिपसा टेक्निक क्या है ये हमारा अगर की कोई टेक्निक है वो क्या है ये तीनों कैसे कैसे करते हैं स्विचर को कैसे पास करते हैं उसका एक एक करके वीडियो डाल देना पसंद है ठीक है बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है इसका वीडियो सर मतलब कैसे कह रहे हैं आप आप जस्ट देखना आईरिस रिपेयर का टेक्निक्स टेक्निक्स ऑफ आई आईरिस रिपेयर यस यस सर ठीक है ये आईरिस को स्विचर कैसे करते हैं क्योंकि आईरिस तो अंदर है ना एसी में है उसको स्विचर करने का कुछ स्पेसिफिक टेक्निक्स होते हैं यस सर टाइप के किसी किसी के नाम पे दिया हुआ है तो वो कैसे कैसे होता है वो एक बार बता यस डॉक्टर गणेश डॉक्टर नितेश गुड मॉर्निंग जस्ट वन क्वेश्चन आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क द फेलोज अभी जो हमारे साथ अभी है ज्वाइन uh, कि आपको अगर पता चला इंटर ऑपरेटिव आप कैटरैक्ट सर्जरी कर रहे हो एको कर रहे हो और आपको पता चल गया कि देर इज ए पी सी आर आपने बिट्रेक्ट मतलब लेंस वेंस आप सब कुछ निकाल दिया फेको इज कम्प्लीट तो आप बिट्रेस का जो मैनेजमेंट है वो कैसे करोगे आप कितना बिट्रेक्ट अभी करना चाहोगे वो एनी आइडिया किसी को कुछ पता होगा तो एक बार बता देना हाउ डू यू एंश्योर दैट देर इज बिट्रेक्ट इज कम्प्लीटेड अराउंड द पी सी आर any of the fellows any of the fellow who knows bolo bhai srishti ravi so the pupil will get round and there will be no peaking if we uh, go with some instrument like uh, any of the dialer we'll swap it and there will be no strands of the vitreous that means the vitrectomy is completed इनफ्लेमेशन uh, सो Uh, I my preferred technique is to probably stain and see. True, but then you have started. You have stained the vitreous, and now you have done vitrectomy also. So as we have already discussed, that we have to keep your uh, vacuum at a lower rate. Uh, cut rate should be high, and your bottom line should be low when you are doing vitrectomy, right? So to what extent would you want to do the vitrectomy? Because if you keep there is vitreous is basically getting hydrated as you are doing vitrectomy, so more and more vitreous will start coming up as you. go and do more vitrectomy so what do you feel is the end point what uh, where you should stop and to what extent can you do the vitrectomy around the pcr when you are in the ac right uh, yes sir the vitrectomy should be basically in sufficient enough so that there should be no vitreous in the bag or in the anterior chamber as such so uh, generally the end point would be to safely be able to place an iol and make sure that there was Uh, after the vitrectomy is complete enough so that there was no vitreous, so we can easily place an IOL. That should be the end point. Generally, there is no uh, like recommendation or no need as to maybe go behind the PCR and do a vitrectomy. But uh, generally enough so that there is no no vitreous in the bag or in the AC. That is generally the end point. No vitreous in the holes, of course. 
right so usually the rule of thumb is that you do a 2 mm uh, to a mm around like vitrectomy around your uh, pcr and if you want to go in then you do a 2 mm inside like behind the pcr inside the anterior vitreous so you are basically have to cut the stalk of vitreous which is coming from your pcr thing so once you cut that stalk the rest of the vitreous will fall behind but if you keep adding and doing more manipulation in the anterior vitreous the more and more vitreous from the posterior chamber will start coming through the pcr area so basically which the stalk which of the vitreous which is coming through the pcr you need to cut that stalk so the rest of the vitreous would fall behind that is basically the idea because vitreous is now taking a form of a mushroom or something which is from coming from the posterior chamber and gradually through the pcr it has gained entry into the anterior chamber so that point of entry no matter how much you do in the angles and other things but the source of the from the place from where the vitreous is entering is the pcr right so you need to cut the stalk and allow the vitreous to fall behind fine so uh, this is another question in addition to this is what kind of breaks would you expect right uh, if a pcr has occurred uh, what is the location of the and location and nature of the breaks that you would expect after a pcr uh, generally the breaks are quite peripheral uh, which quadrant i'm not so sure it would depend on the case No, of course, the quadrant will be highly variable, but uh, the uh, nature of the breaks would be those are little micro breaks which would you would not be able to actually pick up uh, on your normal examination. Those will be micro breaks, and if you have uh, like uh, was being discussed earlier, if you try and uh, like put phaco probe and you continue doing phaco, apart from like uh, more of a GRT, you will find GRDs, giant retinal dialysis will be there, and for that, for to identify those, you will need to do a little bit of indentation. so on indentation you will be able to identify those small breaks and if dialysis are there the dialysis mouth will open if you do indentation so it is mandatory that after any pcr let the ib quiet and after a week or so because those are uh, unless you have manipulated a lot uh, id would not happen or into really quickly but after a week or so it is mandatory that you do a dilate uh, related indentation io to see if you have found any uh, suspicious areas or any dialysis or anything like that and if you find some suspicious lesion it is better we treat them then and there like with lasers or cryo whatever you choose but then uh, identifying those problem problematic areas is important so that you are prepared in the future if something would go wrong if you would need to go for surgery or you know you can treat those uh, risk factors then and there and prevent them from progressing to retinal detachment so one question i had sir so the location of like the these uh, the micro breaks that you mentioned is it generally in the same quadrant where there which side of the i mean back there is a pcr because i've seen two cases and generally it's very uh, you know re relatable like if there was a break uh, a pcr which is there uh, maybe say temporarily of the back the uh, generally the break is also somewhere in the temporal peripheral retina so is it always like that or it was just coincidence for my cases it really is difficult to say but then uh, see it is uh, fairly logical to assume that the area of the back which has been damaged vitreous from that area has basically swept inside and entering into the vitreous from that particular area right so one would most likely find breaks in that area but however opposite to the pcr if uh, depend upon how you have manipulated that if you have pulled and tugged on the vitreous or tried to do fishing uh, breaks could have formed anywhere so it's difficult to predict which location or quadrant but uh, like, uh, like safe to assume the area wherein you have found those uh, pcr areas uh, most likely you would find breaks there but it's difficult no i don't think there is any material that i've read which suggests that something like this has been observed Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other comments? Hello. Power transfer. Hello. Yeah. Uh, one point I want to add: many a times you will get in a scenario like the the patient was operated for SICS, and uh, the SICS got complicated because of a bad construction of the womb. So that is a very difficult scenario. In such cases, you will have to close the globe first, suture all the ports, whatever they have made, because um, it's a, if, if, if the SICS wound is uh, not you know made well, it will leak profusely. So you won't be able to even put in a single port. 
So you have to close the globe first, all the ports, suture them well, and then you start putting the ports. Because if you just push the uh, drocar in a uh, you know uh, soft globe, you are going to more cause more damage. More vitreous will come out to the wounds. So it's a very difficult scenario. So in that case, first you have to close all the wounds, and then you start your vitrectomy. Usually, we do expect that the anterior segment surgeon will suture the wounds, but most of the times uh, you you don't see that happening. So you have to make sure that when you start your surgery, you don't cause any more damage that that has all than that has already been happened. Another point is uh, uh, after you have you are done with your case, you have uh, fixated the IUL to the sclera, and. Uh, at last, you have to indent in every case because you will never be sure that you have created a break or not. There, there may be pre-existing breaks. So you have to make sure before you close the case, indent every, all the periphery, laser all the uh, breaks which you can see. So you don't sir, need to... Yeah. So good morning, sir. I have a doubt. Sir. Uh... Yeah. Uh, while doing cataract surgery, okay, if I have remained, uh, removed half uh, piece of the nucleus and PC rent happened, and I can see, uh, even I can stain the uh, having with PCS with PA, and then uh, can I plan to go to the path then a route and uh, do some remove some vitreous from the anterior highlight space and then enter into the AC and then. Uh, carefully remove the vitreous from the edge. That depends upon your comfort. Like if you are a VR surgeon, you can do that. But for anterior segment surgeon, I won't advise to go through the past plana. Okay, sir. Right? And one more question. Yes. Uh, one more uh, doubt, sir. Like uh, uh, if I am planning to uh, go, like uh, uh, one anterior segment surgeon has sent me the case of uh, drop mixtures and being uh, a fellow, if I am trying to go through the cutter, the nucleus is like grade 2 to 3 uh, NS. Uh, then, sir, uh, can I uh, use the cutter uh, with PFCL like uh, to protect the posterior hole? And what should be the cutter according to the grading of the cut cataract? Uh, like, sir, I, I have done one case in which I used. Uh, actually, I I took a lot more time because my cut rate was high. So, what could be the uh, ideal cut rate for the on the basis of grading? See what uh, you are you are going to use cutter only if you have cortical material in the in the vitreous or you have a very soft nucleus. Very soft nucleus. By that I mean the nucleus that can be aspirated with IA. If you have any more harder cataract, it's better to go with a frag inside because uh, it becomes it makes the surgery longer and more difficult because even slightly harder cataract it is, the cutter will not be able to cut it. And if it is a harder cataract, you have to better uh, increase your uh, uh, vacuum and uh, come, come down on the cut rate. Ideally, uh, by 1,000 or 500, you have to uh, use the uh, cutter. Any any more than that, you won't be able to uh, yeah, cut a harder problem, sir. Yes, sir. Got, got So, yes. thank you. If if you are if you are using the cutter at you know five hundred or four fifty vacuum, which is very high, and you are using a cut rate of uh, say uh, eight hundred or uh, up to thousand uh, five hundred, and you are not able to cut the pieces out of the nucleus, it's better to get in with the fragmatome. Because you are going to cause more damage because the surgery is going to get too long, and it becomes difficult the more time you take. Sir, and one last question, sir: How to identify this micro break which can happen due to traction of the vitreous after PC rain? I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. Sir, uh, how to identify this micro holes like you told? Sir, this, this traction can cause micro holes. Uh, you, have indent, so, you have to indent and use a light pipe. Okay, if you are, if you do self indentation, indent with one hand and use the your other hand with the light pipe and directly illuminate the retina where you are indenting. You will be able to see. 
another way is okay. while you are doing a peripheral vitrectomy with indentation you will be able to see the breaks because when you when you do a, you, are, you are doing a vitrectomy you are actually pulling the vitreous right so the micro breaks will open up momentarily while you are cutting the vitreous so uh, any more vitreous fibers that are attached to the uh, you know the flap of that micro break it will lift up and then you will be able to see so those are difficult to find but with practice you will be able to do it and sir one last thing sir do, do we need to do pvd like in uh, these cases like we should we focus on doing pvd also along with doing proper vitrectomy if, if we are able to uh, uh, remove the nucleus either there are yeah, different or... different schools of, of thought are there but uh, mo- many people say that yeah, even a little bit of vitreous if left yeah, it is going to get pulled inside your frag and it's going to cause damage but uh, in my experience if you do a good core vitrectomy and you uh, don't do a pvd uh, i have not seen practically in many in my cases that you are going to create a break but you have to do a good vitrectomy so that no longer fragments of vitreous are uh, you know uh, freely floating in the vitreous to get pulled inside your fragmentum you have to make sure of that also is okay. kya hai ki bring keep the fragmentum still in the central cavity theek hai फ्रेगमेंटम को मूव करना ही नहीं है जस्ट आप सेंटर में रखो और भी अगर आपका वैक्यूम ठीक है और इन्फ्यूजन यूजुअली बढ़ा दो 50 या 60 कर दो क्योंकि साथ साथ ज्यादा रहता है और डू नॉट मूव द फ्रेगमेंटो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इफ यू आर मूविंग द फ्रेगमेंटो मैम इट इज इफ यू आर चेजिंग द मैटर टू द पेरी पेरी क्या होता है कभी कभी पेरी पेरी में अगर फिर चेयर बचा हुआ है तो वहाँ पे एक मैटर ए के रह जाता है अटक के रह जाता है तो आप अगर फ्रेगमेंटो में लेके उस तरफ चले जाओगे तो that will be disaster so do not just keep the fragmentum at the center if you find that there are there is peripheral vitreous and some matter some lens matter is attached to that to aapko dobara vitrectomy karke wahan pe vitreous free karna padega aur wo lens matter ko free karna padega aur ek cheez hai ye jo hard cataract mein agar aap theko are vitrectomy cutter use karoge to the cutter becomes very blunt to uske baad usually wo cutter useless ho jata hai sometimes you use two cutters in one surgery Oh, so it's not advisable. Yes. If you are having a little bit of difficulty also with the cutter, it's better to go in with the frag. Yes. Immediately change okay. कर लेना better है time कम हो जाएगा and you can use the cutter for your next surgery. Otherwise, even a new cutter will be like useless after this surgery. And the but like or क्या है कभी कभी होता है इतना hard cut hard होता है आपका और या या bullet end type का है जो आपका fake frag में hundred देने से बाद भी वो धुआं धुआं सा हो जाता है. तो ऐसे केसेस में कुछ ज्यादा फेको फ्रैग भी करने का जरूरत नहीं है यू डू एस आई सी एस एंड टेक इट आउट बाय द लाइक बाय ए लार्ज रूम दैट माइट बी सेफर फॉर द पेशेंट बिकॉज इन सच केसेस क्या होता है द द फ्यूम व्हिच हैपेंस इन द आई इट कैन कॉज कॉर्नियलिटीमा और जो होता है आपका जो स्क्लेरा लूड है जिससे आप फेको फ्रैग डाले हो वो जल जाता है इट गेट्स बांट आउट ठीक है एंड क्लोजिंग दैट वोट बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट ठीक है दिस इज ए प्रैक्टिकल थिंग और इसमें आपको देखना पड़ेगा कि यू हैव टू वे आउट द थिंग एंड आल्सो इन वेरी हार्ड कैटरैक्ट इट विल नॉट कट विद द दिस थिंग फेको फ्रैग एंड द टाइम इट टेक्स टू लाइक रिमूव ऑल द न्यूक्लियस इट्स वेरी प्रोलॉन्ग सो ऐसे केसेस में इट इज अ बेटर आईडिया टू ब्रिंग द न्यूक्लियस टू द एंटीरियर चेंबर एंड टेक इट आउट विद अ लार्जर एसआईसी रूट तो मेरा लास्ट केस एक्चुअली सुडो फेकिया था सेंट्रल में केस किया था एंड लेंस वाज इन द बैड न्यूक्लियस निकाल लिया था सर देन एट द एंड मैंने उसको सूचित किया था सर तीनों पोर्ट में लाइक और कुछ कर सकते हैं साइड सर लाइक अंदर गैस भी अगर रखना चाहे तो क्या हो कर सकते हैं सर क्या आप मुझे समझ में नहीं आया थोड़ा सा आप ना माइक को पास में लो सुनाई नहीं दे रहा सर आफ्टर clearing the nucleus from the posterior chamber uh, uh, in my last case the i was pseudo fecic sir but uh, it was having in the central uh, red can i put the gas at the end like the instead of what was the case what was the indication for surgery sir actually the case was from elsewhere uh, uh, so, it was, was the nucleus drop no yes sir chunk of nucleus was there half chunk uh, and uh, i was uh, i was in the bag only 
तो मैंने पार्स लेना रूट से जाके रिमूव किया था कटर से रिमूव किया था लास्ट में मैंने बीएसएस में ही आई आई को रख के टनल सारे ही टेरोटॉमी पोर्ट को मैंने फ्यूचर कर दिया था हाँ ठीक है क्या मैं इसकी जगह गैस कर सकता था मतलब बट वही है हाँ कि विजन का प्रॉब्लम गैस भी डाल सकते हैं गैस भी डाल सकते यूजुअली क्या है अगर आपको इफ यू आर श्योर दैट देयर इज नो ब्रेक देयर इज नो पॉइंट इन पुटिंग गैस नो अगर आपके पास ब्रेक नहीं है और आपका मतलब सब कुछ ठीक है तो क्यों ये करना है गैस डालना और एक चीज है गैस डालने से बहुत रेयर है बट ये भी हो सकता है कि हाइड्रोफिलिक लेंसेज अगर है तो उसमें ऊपर से किसान हो सकता है दैट इज अ रेयर सीनारी और गैस डाल सकते हैं ऐसा नहीं है कि गैस नहीं डालते जस्ट इन द केस कि अगर कोई माइक्रो होल हो तो वो नहीं नहीं वो माइक्रो होल होगा तो गैस डालोगे वो कुछ देर क्लोज रहेगा उसको गैस चला जाएगा तो रिटर्न रेटिनल डिटैचमेंट हो जाएगा तो गैस इज नॉट रेडियो नॉट स्टॉपिंग द रेटिनल डिटैचमेंट नो इफ यू हैव नॉट डायग्नोज तो होल दैट विल बी तो वो तो वो तो आपका होल रह गया आपने गैस डाल दिया ठीक है but it doesn't close the hole no if you have not yes. not insert the hole or not remove the traction over the hole it will detach after some time so gas dalo ki na dalo usme koi change nahi hota so ideally high magnification mein aapko indent karke pura pura ke paas charo taraf dekhna hai theek hai uske baad close karna hai lekin ye jitna bolna easy hai utna karna easy nahi hota hai because the surgeries are mostly recent surgeries and the wounds are leaky सोचना की आप पार्ट लेना से अंदर जाओगे थोड़ा सा विट्रेक्टमी करके बाहर आ जाओगे इट डजेंट वर्क लाइक दैट If you want, if you are entering the vitreous through the pass filler route, it is mandatory that at least you cover. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.